Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Transformations of Random Variables. And here we're going to look at how to uh, transform two normal random variables to a Rayleigh distribution. Let's let xi be id normal zero sigma squared random variables. i equals one to two. So we have x1 and x2. They're both normally distributed, mean zero. They have a common variance called sigma squared. This is the density for xi, f of xi, and it's just the standard normal distribution. Well, not the standard normal distribution. It's a normal distribution with mean zero, right? If it's standard normal, that sigma squared would be one. Now we want to find the distribution of the square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared. And the way we do it, we're going to use a variable transformation. So let's let y equal the what we want. And then we have to, and so since we're going from R2 space, we need to go to R2 space, but then we'll later integrate this variable out, leaving just f of y. So let's let z equal x1. Now to back transform this, that means x1 is z, right? That's kind of a no-brainer. But here, to solve for x2, we need to square both sides. That's where the y squared comes in. And then we subtract y1 squared to the other side. So that's z squared. And so we have x1 is this, x2 is this, square root of y squared minus z squared. Now the Jacobian <coughs> is, we take the partial of x1 with respect to y, so that's 0. The partial of x1 with respect to z, that's 1. x2 is the partial of x2 with respect to y, and we get this, y divided by square root of y squared minus z squared. <laughs> now technically we don't need to know this one, right? Because when we take the determinant, this is 0, but this is what it is. So this would be the partial of x2 with respect to z. We take the determinant and we get this. And, and technically it's the absolute value, right? Because otherwise there would be a minus there. But it's positive. Now this is the tricky part of this map. Okay, So here we have x1 and x2. And we're in R2 space. And they're independent uh, normal random variables. So actually there, it's, it, this is like a dome or a, you know, a, a bump, hump. And... There's level spaces, so like if we go around a circle, you know, if, if it's the same distance here and here, those two points have the same probability or density value. And when we map this, so I like to, um, if we go this boundary here, so x2 is 0 and x1 goes from 0 to infinity, so up here, z goes from positive to infinity, from 0 to infinity, positive infinity. But then this one, if, if x2 is 0, and then we take the square root of 1 squared, so it's just y equals x1. So um, z is equal to y on this, this point here. This one, x2 is 0 again, but x1 goes from 0 to negative infinity. And then you do the math up here, it creates this boundary. And so every point in here is mapped in here. But now the crazy thing is, since x, you know, x2 squared you know, takes any positive or negative and makes it the same value, any value in here is mapped to the same region. So if we look at this point, we don't know if it came from this point or this point, right? So we have to, the, the regions aren't one-to-one -one and onto. You can't go back and forth and know where it came from. So we have to treat these regions separately. So we'll, we'll, we'll treat this region separately, and then we have to treat this region separately. And then we just have to add those probabilities. But... The nice thing about the normal distribution, it's symmetric. So, like, so these create little level surface, uh, level contours or curves where it's equal probability. 
So it turns out that a point up here and a point down here is mapped to the same point and they have the same probability because it's a it's the normal distribution which is symmetric so technically we only need to find this mapping and then just multiply every point times two because it's it's the same exact down here uh, so so this is mapped to the same region as this so it's not one to one uh, both points are mapped to the same point okay so each pair of points mapped to one point in YZ have the same probability. Let's calculate for one point and then just multiply by two. But now the 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 inter integration, how did I find well that um so one another way to think about this, so since y is the variable that we want to keep and z is what we want to integrate out when you're thinking about calculating these ranges you you want to set this one general and then find the conditions on z right because and, and i'll explain that so so z we could say goes from negative infinity to infinity and then we refine the find restrictions on y but we don't. We, we, we want to set Y and then find the restrictions on Z. So if we look at this, um, we know X goes from 0 to infinity, right? Which implies this. It goes, you know, just take squ square each side here of the inequality. But, and then we add Z everywhere. We're back to this. But this Z squared minus Y squared implies that z is between minus y and y. So this is actually our limits of integration, but we also found it by this picture. Okay, so now the joint distribution of f of yz is this. Remember, it's, it would have been this, which is this region, this region up here, plus this region. But everything here is identical to here, so I just put a 2 out front. Uh, y goes from um, 0 to infinity. That's right. This is 0 to infinity. And that's what I mean by make this one general, then put conditions on this so you can integrate it. And so that's what we do here. Now we're going to, remember this is f of 1, so that's the normal distribution density and we plug in z right and for f of 2 we have to plug in that and then that's absolute value of the Jacobi so on the next page I'm going to we're going to do that so we have two, that's the multiply by 2 out front so this is a normal density with z squared in this is a normal density with the square root of y squared minus z squared put in and this is Jacobian. Now, this 2 cancels with that 2, and then those combine to be this. And I'm going to take this y and bring it over here. When, when we add the exponents of the exponentiation, the z's cancel, right? Because since this is squared, the square root goes away. And the y squared is here, and the z's cancel. We're left with this. And then we're just left at the bottom. And the reason I'm doing it this way, I kind of want to put everything Z on this side and everything non-Z on this side. So when I find the density of Y, which means we integrate this density over Z, we integrate it out. Remember, we're going from negative Y to Y. So we plug it in. And this is constant in regards to the Z world. So we're here. So now let's let U be Z over Y. So then du is 1 over y dz. So here, and if you think about this, so if we if we factor out a, z, a y squared and then bring it outside there, it's just y. So it's dz over y. But in here, we have 1 minus z squared over y. And so this substitution creates this. Now if we put in y for z, we get 1. 
If we put in negative y, we get negative 1. Now, the next transformation, let's let u equal sine of x. So that means du is equal to cosine of x dx. So if we plug in this piece here, and then this piece up here, we get this. But now look at the limits of integration. We have to put in a, a we're in the u world, so we have to put in a 1 here, and we have to take the arc sine to get it to the other side. So that's why it's the arc sine of 1. And we plug in minus 1 here, take the arc sine. That's why it's arc sine of minus 1. Uh, sine, 1 minus sine squared, cosine squared. But now look at this. 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. Square root, that's cosine. So the cosines cancel. And we're left with just this. And I went ahead and put in this. Arc sine of 1 is pi over 2. Arc sine of minus 1 is minus pi over 2. So now this integrate, so we it, uh, this is a 1. So the antiderivative is just x. And then we evaluate it at these two limits. But if we plug in pi over 2 and then minus a minus pi over 2, this is pi. Right? So that cancels with that pi. And we're left with this. And this is the, the Rayleigh distribution. And we're done. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. I sure did. Please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.